operation is a full-scale war targeting civilians, threatening the territorial integrity uh, of Ukraine. And it does seem as though President Putin is really trying to bolster and rally the support of the Russian people. Oh, dude. Back to... Is China the only country Putin can turn to? Vladimir Putin once described the collapse of the Soviet Union as the greatest geopolitical catastrophe of the 20th century. Note the word geopolitical. This is key. I don't think it's the Soviet Union per se he was miss missing. He was missing the imperial grandeur of it. Putin yeah, of course. was shaped by the Cold War. He was 10 years old during the... Bro, this is the same... Re Yo, people are... I don't know why people fucking make it seem like you're supposed to suck it the fuck up and act like you are not a, uh, a, a shell of what you once were. I mean, she's right. Of course she's right. But, like, it's weird whenever they fucking make it seem like, you know, it's weird that Putin and many other Russians unironically uh, feel like the USSR, they were better off during the USSR. Americans have no way to comprehend what it's like to be an embarrassed shell of uh, what you once were. You know what I mean? They just don't get it. So they make it seem like it's fucking uh, so strange that they're saying that. Like, of course they're saying that. Of course there are people that want to go back to the fucking USSR too. I mean... So far... So far, China hasn't even directly threatened America's hegemonic power in any sort of, like, military way. And Americans fucking spin like a top. I actually don't know what the, if I said that right or whatever, what that even means, but whatever. American fucking, uh, their heads explode thinking about China every time you bring it up. Cuba missile crisis when Khrushchev and Kennedy walked the world to the brink of nuclear war and then like Putin back. doesn't like the USSR for its politics he likes the USSR because but it was a fucking major superpower Russia. Khrushchev's great granddaughter says it's not the ideology that Putin wants to recreate it's the power yeah, the course. empire was then recognized uh, feared uh, was um, uh, taken into account, even if it had to fight uh, with guns and weapons to be taken into account. And I think it always goes for all Russian and Soviet leaders, uh, is that they just wanted to be treated dec decently by the West. So as I kind of like to joke, although it's no laughing matter anymore, is that they don't want to be seated at the children's table next to the toilet. <laughs> When the Soviet Union collapsed, that is pretty much where Russia found itself. With a president who went from hero to zero in the turbulent 90s, dictated to by the United States, the only remaining superpower. The United States was brutal, okay? Brutal. What America did in divvying up what remaining coffers that the Russian uh, uh, industrial capabilities had to Western-backed oligarchs is literally, like, in a just world, would seen as a crime against humanity, okay? Would be written in school books, not as the liberalization and democratization of Russia, but instead the sacking and, and uh, the, the vulturous picking apart of the Russian economy by Western-backed forces. Just look at the Rust Belt and how people talk. It's exactly the same as Russians missing the USSR. It's actually a really good... Damn, dude. Sometimes my fucking... Sometimes my fucking band accounts that are on their socks, they're dropping some good takes in the chat. Pretty good. Yeah, you're right. Vladimir Putin has been through four U.S. presidents in his 22 years in power. From George W. Bush, who looked into his soul and decided he trusted him. Through the difficult Obama years, the fraught Trump presidency, and now 
Joe Biden, who once claimed he told Putin to his face he didn't think he had a soul. No matter who was in the White House, President Putin's aim was uh -huh. always the same, to push back against the unipolar American world order. That's what his war in Syria was about. That's what Crimea and Donbass were about. He believed that Ukraine's pro-Western leaders were American puppets. But then came the invasion. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, they, but they are. Perhaps Putin miscalculated the strength of Ukrainian resistance. Perhaps he underestimated the Western response. But if he was looking for a seat at the top table... Listen, you're either a Western puppet or you're a Russian puppet. That's it. The people that get fucked over in the middle are still the Ukrainians. But Syria was a pro-Western puppet? No, we're talking about Ukraine, dude. What the fuck? Obviously, a fucking Assad is not a Western puppet. Are you crazy? There's one family with a fucking demonstrable track record of not being Western puppets. It's those guys. I mean, not a good dude by any means, but... Table, he blew it. Basically, with that war, whatever those hopes you had to be treated as not equal, but at least as somebody who you can be conversed with, that's gone. There's no more conversation. There's no, there's a word in Russian, rukopajatelny, or near rukopajatelny. There's a non hand shakeable. Can't shake his hand, yeah. Right, exactly. So Russia now is non hand shakeable. So, yes, and it's, it's also kind of also very Russian thing is that you try to make it work and then he's like, damn with it. Let's just go and shoot off, not only shoot my, myself in the foot or shoot Putin, shot the country in the foot, just let's take a cannon and chop off. All the whole, the whole leg, almost to the waist. <laughs> Russia is now almost completely cut bit. off from the West, not just economically and in terms of trade. Car manufacturers can't get the parts they need. Aeroplanes will soon stop flying. But culture. You're not wrong. I mean, they, that is well. what oh, Russia is doing currently. Is a war so where can Moscow turn? There is one obvious answer. Beijing. China's economic dominance has been long foretold, but it's now coming of age as a global political force. In early February, Putin flew to Beijing for a meeting with Xi Jinping. The two leaders announced a strategic partnership which would have no limits. Two weeks later... Hey, There was a very important line in this meeting, or in the, in the written negotiation, written agreement, whatever. That was... <clears throat> that was teaming up against... Uh, uh, teaming up with the sole purpose of undermining Western influence in the world. Like, straight up, openly, or, sorry, defending both nations against Western involvement and Western influence. Views are tapering off, but I'm still arguing with shitlibs who think we need to keep funneling money to Ukraine. I mean, they, they're they always going to say that. According to Reddit's on, uh, uh, libs on Reddit, Xi controls Russia now. Dude, Reddit's foreign policy is like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. They're pretty good on a lot of other stuff. Like, they're pretty woke in a lot of instances. But when it comes to, like, American foreign policy, oh, my God. Reddit becomes a fucking cesspool, dude. Everyone is a neoliberal. And, and the alternative isn't good either. It's like, what is it, Gen Z Dong or whatever? Those guys are, like, literally... It's either you're just like actually guzzling American propaganda 
like across the board or you're guzzling fucking uh, uh, Russian propaganda. It's so strange. Like, why can't there be any fucking nuanced opinions? I mean, it makes sense because I'm asking Reddit. Impossible. That's never going to happen. Later, Putin invaded Ukraine, and Beijing has made it clear it will continue to support Russia no matter what sanctions are threatened by the West. Why should China sabotage its relations with Russia on the one hand and its relations with Ukraine on the other hand? It doesn't make sense as far as China is concerned, and to threaten to sanction China is going to be suicidal. Why? Right, and so, those, so those relations between China and Russia will continue regardless of this war. Absolutely. Now, whether the relations can even gain further strength, that's another thing. And that's really between China and Russia to decide. At the end of the 1980s... I love that. It's awesome. Sorry. It's just straight up fucking awesome, dude. Look, I live in America. I think America has a lot of potential. Maybe it should, like, you know, worry about its own business for a little bit rather than anything else. But as someone who also has family members and a connection to a country that is not the United States of America, and I'm sure plenty of other fucking fresh off the boats or uh, foreigners would agree with me on this, hearing another incredibly powerful nation for once be like, the fuck out of here, bro. Yeah, we're going to fucking have our own conversation. What, what's it to you, motherfucker? What, what do you think? You can, like, get in and get involved in this shit? Feels good. Feels fucking good, dude. It does. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. That, like, this is a conversation. But it's not ridiculous when you recognize that America is the hegemonic global superpower. Okay? Woo! Like, they're just straight up like, come on, fuck off, dude. Fuck off. 80s, the Soviet world was beginning to crumble. In Moscow, they had Glasnost and Perestroika. In Beijing, Tiananmen Square. When the Soviet Union collapsed, China took note. As Viktor Gao remembers, he was Deng Xiaoping's interpreter. China learned a big lesson. That is... China need to stand firm on its matters of principle. China need to maintain domestic stability at any cost. And China wants to do whatever it can to stay away from wars or military conflicts of any kind. I think this is the lesson for China when we look back at the collapse of the former Soviet Union. No country, big or small, should overreach. China also secretly low-key on the Hasanabi doctrine grind. You know, nuclear proliferation. Russia has overreached in Ukraine. Beijing's support will come at a price. This will not be a relationship of equals. And Putin may have lost his chance to cement Russia's status as a global force. Translation, prevent people from free speech and kill all protesters? I mean... He didn't say internally. He said externally avoid wars. And they do have a pretty good fucking track record on that thus far. You know, some, some tweaks. You know, some areas of, of needed improvement, certainly. But remember... When China engages in border, in, in um, colonial or irredentist or actually fucking imperial um, attitudes, you're immediately, of course, posting that. Remember that what they're doing, just like what Russia was doing, or what the USSR was doing originally, 
was what America has done already that we take for granted. We're just like, it's over. You know, California. I live in California. It's American. Shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like, so we look to countries that are developing later or developing on in front of our eyes and we act like that is somehow different than what we are currently doing or what we have already done. narrative that the USSR just collapsed, the topic is fly lies in the 20th century. Gorbachev wanted U.S.-USSR partnership in good faith. U.S. went behind his back to Yeltsin. Others got republics to vote to leave. USSR kind of knifed in the back. Just as China is helping to break America's dominance. The offices of Media Most. Oh! So, um, we're back to the, uh, to the uh, PBS 